it's budget season and the GM of operations is looking for some savings. So what you have is the labor budget. You have labor hours required per month, the number of full-time staff, and you also have number of casual hours required. So how do you level load the labor hours in different months so that you have the minimum labor cost, or in other words, you have the minimum requirement for temp labor resulting in the lowest temp cost? Let's take a look. Now, before we calculate the ideal costs or ideal combination, let's quickly look at the calculations here in the model itself because this is important, the setup of the model. So first of all, this is budgeted hours. These are hours that are already provided to you based on production demand. The number of headcount is 50 every month, it doesn't change. How is full-time hours calculated? Here is one way to calculate it. The number of full-time staff times their availability because they will not be available all the time, right? So when you are calculating the hours that they're available to work, you have to account for absenteeism and training and other activities that they will be performing during the year. So they may not be available all the time. So for the model, we are taking 90% availability to account for absenteeism and other absences. So full-time staff times the available hours times the work days excluding holidays. And I will show you its calculation. So for each month, we have calculated what will be the number of work days they will be available if we exclude holidays. And that multiplied by eight, which is the number of hours they work every day, gives us the total number of hours that the full-time staff will be available. So 50 people will be available for 7,560 hours in the month of January. Now, if you see that the labor hours required for January are only 6,831. So there's no temp requirement, which is simply a difference of full-time hours available versus the required labor, okay? So in this case, because it's going to be a negative number in the formula, we have added that if the difference is a negative number, it should be zero, so that the temp hours required will only show up when, for example, in the case of Feb, the required hours are more than the available full-time hours, okay? So this calculates our temp hours required. Then we have full-time cost and temp cost. So full-time cost is simply the rate of full-time, the average rate of full-time per hour, multiplied by the number of people, multiplied by eight hours because they work eight hours every day, and that multiplied by the number of work days, holidays because they are also paid for the holidays, okay? That gives us our full-time cost, and the temp cost is simply the number of temp hours required multiplied by $20. You could take a look at your organization. Maybe there is an availability factor for temp hours as well. Maybe they are also not working all the time that they are available, so not the full eight hours. So you could add a similar factor of 90% for the temp cost as well, which of course will increase your temp cost a little bit. Now let's take a look at how we calculated the number of work days, including holidays, and the number of work days, excluding holidays. We entered the start and end date of each month. And the formula we use is net work days, open the parentheses, start date, comma, end date. This gives you the total number of work days. Excel calculates it automatically, excluding Saturdays and Sundays. And then based on the country or region you are in, you have to enter the number of holidays. So I'm entering the public holidays in the year 2023 for Ontario, Canada. And we have about 10 holidays here. And the formula to calculate the number of work days excluding holidays is just a simple addition. So it will be net work days, start date and end date. And then you select the range, the select the range of holidays. So S4 to T4 is where I have the holidays for the month of January. Similarly, I copied the formula all the way down. So this gives me the number of work days with, without holidays. This is the number of work days if holidays are included. And you can see in the month of January, we have one holiday. So the number of work days excluding holidays is 21, total work days is 22. Similarly, in December, we have two, two holidays, Christmas and Boxing Day. So the number of work days excluding holidays is 19. So we use this column to calculate the available hours of full-time staff, which is this one. And we use this column to calculate the pay, which is this column, okay? Because those employees are also paid for the holidays. So total cost is just the sum of full-time cost and temp cost. So that's how our model is set up. At this point, we are looking at $3.5 million of total cost, which is split between full-time and temp cost. You can use the solver add-in. So in order to access the solver add-in, you can go to the data tab and click on solver. 
And if you don't have Solver add-in already active, you can go to File, Options, Add-ins. You see currently for me, this is active, Solver add-in, it's an Excel add-in. If it's inactive for you, you, it, you will probably see it somewhere here under this heading. And because it's an Excel add-in, you can go to an Excel add-in and click Go. And you will find it here and probably see uh, it's not checked. So you check on it and click OK, and you will have Solver add-in available for you. Okay. Now here are the Solver parameters. So number one is objective, set objective. So of course, our objective is to have the minimum cost in this cell, which is 3.5 million, right? So the objective cell will be cell I16. You select that. Next, you choose whether you want a max, min, or specific value. So we select min. Now, the next option is which cell values do you want to change? So in our case, we know that for the time being, we cannot change the full-time headcount. That's already people that are already on the payroll. We don't want to change that number. What we want to change is the number of labor hours. However, we cannot change the total number of hours because that's the budgeted production volume. So we have flexibility in terms of monthly production, how much we produce in a, in a certain month. But in total, we still have to produce all of the products, which is a total of 102,791 hours, okay? So we will select the range of all the months, the hours for all the months, okay? This is the range which will change as a result of the solver calculation. Okay. However, we need to add the constraint, which is the total hours should be 102,791, right? So let's add that constraint, which is this cell reference, okay, should be equal to 102,791. Click on Add, Cancel, and now your solver is ready to calculate. So let's click on Solve. And now it tells you that the solver has found a solution. So if you click on OK, you see the number has now changed to 3375. The hours have now shifted. So you see there is more production volume in January. And you see the temp costs have also been realigned. So the original was 3.514. So we were able to generate a saving of $138,960. Pretty good, huh? Now the GM is impressed by the savings that you have calculated so far. But he is also thinking about maybe changing the full-time headcount a little bit. And he has asked you, what if we reduce the full-time headcount so that we have a minimum of 40 people instead of 50? So for that scenario, let's go back to the original position. Again, we have 3.5 million. That was the original template that we had. Now this time, let's create the solver calculation to include if this number can be changed as well, okay? So our objective is still the same. Make sure that this number is the minimum but where we select by changing cells, this time we can actually change both the hours, labor hours, and the full-time headcount. So notice that I'm selecting both these ranges. So that's the range selection. And in, in terms of our constraints, we still have the constraint. We still have to do the full hours of 102,791. But we add another constraint, which is that this range should be greater than or equal to 40, okay? We cannot go below the number 40, okay? So let's add that. Cancel, and you can see this new constraint here. And now when we hit the solve button and see here, now the saving is actually 400,000 because the solver calculated that it is really best to go down to 40, which is our minimum constraint, right? And then have more temp hours because of course the temp rate is lower. So this increases our temp cost from the previous scenario, right? So previously we were looking at 256K. Now we're looking at 615K of temp cost, but our full-time cost has uh, dropped significantly from 3.1 million to 2.5 million. So overall it's giving us a saving of 400,000. So you tell the GM that although this gives us additional saving, but there are a few factors that he needs to consider, which include the termination or severance cost of those 10 people, that needs to be considered and that would reduce the amount of saving. Additionally, is it possible to hire the temps as and when required? Plus, will the temp or casual employees have the same level of training and 
productivity as the full-time employees and also the overall morale of the employees. So a lot of factors to consider, but as far as the financial calculations are concerned, you share with him that this is the saving that can be achieved if the full-time headcount is reduced to a minimum of 40. Let me know if you get into such situations where you need to make calculations like this or if you have used the solver add-in in the past. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, make sure you subscribe to my channel. And there are plenty of videos that you may find useful. So make sure you go through the videos as well. And you can connect with me either through Instagram or Facebook via the link provided in the description box below. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you and bye for now.